at that moment. Tears flowed down the old woman's cheeks. Now my work is done. I'm ready to go into another world at any time. God bless you abundantly, my Bonnie boy. This is the Japanese cemetery located in the Queens District of New York City. Every year, on Memorial Day at the end of May, the Japanese American Association New York organizes a memorial service to remember the deceased. Next to it, there is a conspicuously large gravestone. Engraved on it is the name Toyohiko Campbell Takami. Toyohiko Takami, a person who came alone from Japan to the United States without any support and gained fame as a physician in New York. The excellence of his medical skills was widely known. When Admiral Togo Heihachiro, who led Japan to victory in the Russo-Japanese War, needed urgent medical care in America, he assumed the big responsibility of being his attending physician. Furthermore, in New York, a city experiencing economic development, he provided free medical care to poor immigrants and treated his patients with a compassionate heart. He also laid the foundation of the current Japanese American Association New York and made significant contributions to the establishment of this Japanese cemetery for many nameless Japanese individuals. Everyone is equal and everyone has the right to live happily. With that belief, Mr. Takami comforted many hearts. He left Japan at a young age and was supported by much kindness in a distant land as well. And he was destined to have a fateful encounter with a certain person. Toyohiko Takami. How was his spirit of compassion nurtured? Mr. Takami was born in 1875 in an ex-samurai family in Kumamoto Prefecture. At the age of 15, he diligently pursued his studies under a strict educational policy. It was at this age that he was deeply moved by the story of a Christian missionary. This missionary was none other than Mr. Jō Nijima. Impressed by the teachings of Christ, Jō Nijima had illegally immigrated to America during the late Edo period. He became the first Japanese person to graduate from a local university's theology department. Upon returning to Japan, he established what is now Doshisha University and gained fame as a prominent educator in Japan. Young Takami became captivated by the story of Jō Nijima and made up his mind to follow in his footsteps by going to America. Takami had set his goal. However, during the late 19th century in Japan, going abroad was not an easy feat. Many challenges stood in his way such as what he would do in America, how he would support himself while living there, and the fact that he had no funds for the journey in the first place. Nevertheless, Takami, who couldn't abandon his dream of going to America, 
learned that he could work while traveling abroad by becoming a crew member on a foreign ship. One night, he left home without telling his parents and headed to Osaka, where he had a relative. Initially, he planned to travel from Kumamoto to Osaka by ship, but his family, who had learned of his departure, had already arrived at the port. So Takami decided to walk the approximately 500 kilometers to Osaka on foot. It was an arduous journey, walking about 25 kilometers per day. His feet swelled and he felt like giving up multiple times along the way. When he ran out of money and on a rainy night asked a police box if they could accommodate him, he was coldly turned down. However, even in these challenging circumstances, many people came to the aid of the determined 15-year-old who never gave up on his dream of going to America. While camping in the mountains of Hiroshima, a local hunter who couldn't bear to see him suffer, invited Takami into his home and provided him with food. With the help of many acts of kindness, Takami finally met up with his relative in Okayama and continued on to Osaka. There he found work as a sailor in Kobe. About one year and six months after leaving home, in October 1891, he somehow made it to New York. What was New York like when Mr. Takami arrived? In the midst of the continuing economic development in the United States, following the end of the Civil War, New York City was a place where capital from around the world converged and continued to grow. Simultaneously, many immigrants, primarily from Southern and Eastern Europe, were flowing into the city, leading to extreme disparities in wealth. At just 16 years old, Takami's first purpose in New York was to study English, save money, and follow in the footsteps of Joe Niyajima by attending the university. A few months after arriving in New York, he found a job as a chef on a warship docked at a shipyard through an introduction from a Japanese person he had met locally. After a year of work, Takami, known for his diligence and reliability, was appointed as the ship's head chef and gained the trust of many. The captain of the ship, who had been keeping an eye on Takami, approached him one day with the story of an elderly woman. This woman was offering free English lessons to foreigners who couldn't speak the language. Intrigued, Takami decided to meet this elderly woman with the captain's introduction. It was a cold day in March, 1893. Mr. Takami's autobiography, Shining Star, describes his encounter with this old woman in detail. I rang the doorbell. The door was opened by a dignified lady of advanced age. She had very keen and observing eyes. She took me by the hand and looked at me as if I were a strange object. She asked me why I came to America and what my plans were. I told her that I was determined to obtain an American education. This encounter would later have a profound impact on Takami's life. The elderly woman was named Nancy Campbell, a descendant of Scottish nobility who had crossed to America in the 17th century. She was a devout Christian and, in New York, dedicated herself to teaching English to impoverished Asian immigrants and spreading the teachings of Christianity. 
Despite his limited English, Campbell understood Takami's determination and began teaching him English every evening. She treated Takami like her own son. Within a few months of their meeting, Takami left his job on the warship and started living with her. One night, Takami asked, Why are you living in this dirty area where impoverished people live? Can't we find a better place to live, Miss Campbell? As she gazed at the stars in the night sky, she replied, They shine on us as well as on the people in the finest mansion. Even if our races and homes are different, every human being is equal, and everyone has the right to live. Through his life with her, Takami learned this important lesson. Time passed, and it was time to consider higher education. Campbell not only negotiated with the school and secured scholarships, but also provided financial assistance for the remaining tuition fees. Thanks to her support, Takami was able to enroll in one of the top preparatory schools for college in the United States. Even after starting his dormitory life, Takami continued to write letters to Campbell almost every week. When he first visited home, he lived frugally, cutting down on food expenses, and she shed tears upon seeing how much weight he had lost. In 1898, after graduating from the college preparatory school, Takami began considering his university education. Campbell's hope was for him to become a minister and spread the teachings of Christ worldwide. Therefore, she revealed to him that she was in negotiations on a scholarship with Princeton Theological Seminary, a prestigious university. When she said, it is a wonderful profession, just think, you will have the chance to preach the gospel to the people of any land, and you will receive everlasting blessings. Takami's answer was, however, different from what she had hoped for. He said, it had always been my most cherished ambition and hope to become a physician. I intended to make it my aim to preach the gospel through my daily conduct and in the manner in which I lived throughout my life. At that time, New York had become the world's largest city. However, immigrants from Southern and Eastern Europe were living in impoverished conditions. Many of them resided in crowded and dirty apartments known as tenements. There were significant hygiene issues and infectious diseases were rampant among the immigrants. Many people lost their lives under these conditions. Witnessing this situation since his arrival in New York, Takami believed that helping these people, just as he had been helped, was a way to practice Christ's teachings. And this led him to choose the path of a doctor. Campbell was now aware of Takami's aim to become a doctor and said, you would suffer privations for nearly 10 more years. Then Takami replied, hardship and struggle mold the future of mankind. With Miss Campbell's understanding, Mr. Takami enrolled at Cornell University's medical school in 1902. At the time, the United States did not have a fully established system for becoming a doctor and the conditions and quality of education varied significantly between medical schools. However, some universities were gradually improving the situation and emphasizing specialized education. Cornell University, now known as a prestigious institution, was one of those universities. 
Although its medical school had been established only four years before Takami's enrollment, it was gaining attention for offering advanced specialized education through training at major hospitals in New York during the course. Even after his enrollment, Takami needed to maintain excellent grades to continue receiving scholarships. He sought guidance from notable pathologists, including Dr. Ewing, renowned for discovering Ewing's sarcoma. He became so engrossed in his studies that he often forgot to eat, leading to Campbell scolding him frequently. In 1906, Takami graduated with excellent grades. Upon graduation, the local newspaper featured his story of overcoming much hardship since coming to America, praising the success of a young man from Japan. Mr. Takami, who couldn't speak English properly when he arrived in America at the age of 16, had overcome numerous challenges and had become an impressive man at the age of 31. Upon graduation, he recited the Hippocratic Oath, with purity and holiness will I pass my life and practice my art. Thus began the days of fulfilling the promise with Campbell to preach the gospel through my daily conduct. Becoming a physician and achieving financial independence thanks to Campbell's support, Takami began his activities energetically. After graduating from college, he opened his own clinic in the impoverished neighborhoods of Brooklyn. Just as Campbell had once spoken about a shining star that would shine indiscriminately, regardless of race or social status, Takami sought to relieve the suffering of the poor and support their improvement of living conditions. Furthermore, he considered establishing a mutual aid organization among the Japanese living in New York. The inspiration came from an experience he had during his second year at Cornell University. It was during a practical training session for autopsy. Twelve or thirteen bodies were brought in for training. And among them, there was a body that appeared to be Japanese when he looked at the name tag. He considered himself fortunate to be living as a medical student in America. The deceased Japanese person might have come to America with dreams just like himself. They might have had a family. They might have had a loved one. However, what lay before him was just a lifeless body with no known identity, distinguished only by a number. Mr. Takami wanted to at least give this unknown Japanese person a proper burial. This desire led to the idea of establishing a Japanese cemetery, which is still in existence today. In May 1907, the New York Japanese Mutual Aid Society was established, and Mr. Takami, as one of the initiators, became its president. Takami possessed a spirit of compassion and empathized with people regardless of their background. There was one thing that he cared about the most. Campbell, who had encouraged him for years, was gradually losing her strength due to old age. She had supported him with unconditional love since he was a runaway boy, not only providing financial assistance for his tuition and living expenses, but also offering support on a spiritual level, treating him like a real son. Takami wanted to express his gratitude to her, not just with words, but with something that would leave a lasting impact. On a summer day, he came up with a surprise. 
Upon entering the room, a cloth covered something on the wall. She asked me what it was. I replied, That is a portrait of the most wonderful woman in the whole world. Underneath was a portrait of a young Campbell. It had been about 15 years since Takami had met her. For him to praise her as the most wonderful woman in the whole world, and for this portrait, which would never fade, to continue watching over her beloved child even after her death. These thoughts likely brought tears of gratitude to her eyes. Then she said, Now my work is done. I'm ready to go into another world at any time. God bless you abundantly, my bonnie boy. In January 1907, Miss Campbell passed away at the age of 80. After her passing, Takami fell into a state of listlessness. While gazing at the stars in the night sky, he remembered the shining star that she had spoken about during her lifetime. Everyone has the right to live equally. The journey of preaching the gospel through his daily conduct had only just begun.